Have you ever considered a breast augmentation? Implants don't only make your chest larger, they can also give you a more youthful shape. Find out if breast enhancement is the right choice for you, here on The Younger You. I'm on top of the world, now I'm living. And the good just gets better, keeps a giving. Not even close to the end, it's just beginning. Life is getting lighter while the days are getting brighter, yeah. And it's a good, I won't even worry anymore. Took all my cares, still can kick them all out the door. Go on a try, come and tell me what you're waiting for. Move and keep them going till your life is overflowing, yeah. Welcome to The Younger You. Today on the show we're talking about breast augmentations. This procedure continues to grow in popularity and remains the top cosmetic procedure in the United States. Later in the episode we'll be meeting Danielle who decided that a breast augmentation was the right choice for her. But first, of course, we need to speak to the cosmetic surgeon who actually did this procedure. Dr Dunkley, how are you? I'm well, how are you Troy? Fantastic. Good. I've seen the after results here. Excellent. Very, very impressed. What is a breast augmentation and how does it differ from a breast lift? So breast augmentation is simply putting implants in, yep. although it can be done with fat grafting as well, but uh -huh. typically we're referring to putting implants in to enhance the size of the breast and the look. Okay. It differs from a lift in that with a lift we're actually bringing the breast up, whereas with an augmentation we're simply enlarging. Them. Enlarging. So there are two different ways of actually having the implant placed above or below the pectoral muscle. Is that correct. correct? Why? Well, the difference would be where the implant is sitting in relation to the muscle. So the muscle we're referring to, the pec muscle, goes from your shoulder yes. to your chest. We can either put that implant on top of the muscle or we can lift the muscle up and put the implant underneath. Okay. Underneath the muscle, the benefits are we have more concealment for the implant. There's simply more of the patient covering the implant. So will that look softer? Yes, rather more, than harder. More natural, ah. yes. Whereas when we're on top of the muscle, you're more likely to have the implant and, and transition, a more obvious transition from breast to chest. Okay, so why wouldn't you always do it that way? Some but, people prefer to go above. Certain surgeons always do them above. My preference is underneath because there's a couple of other things that help us okay. out. So, Such as? Well, the added concealment, as well as it decreases one of the risks that we worry about with breast augmentation. Okay. Why do it the other way? Why would other surgeons particularly want to have it on top of the muscle? Some people prefer the look. It definitely gives you a little bit more lift on the breast when you're above the muscle. Yes. Um, and there's a couple of reasons other than that. One, if you have a cone-shaped breast, which we call a tuberous breast, sometimes yes. you'll go on top of the muscle, just so the implant has more impact on that tissue and stretches and rounds it out. Okay. There are different types of implants. What are they? Let's clear that up. So you have saline and silicone implants are the two broad categories. So a saline implant actually has a silicone shell that we're filling with saline IV fluid. If the implant were to break, your body just absorbs that fluid. The silicone implants come in two varieties. There's cohesive gel, mm -hmm. which is our standard um, silicone implant. And then there's another type of silicone called form stable or memory shape. And people usually refer to that implant as the gummy bear implants. I got you. I hear a lot about the gummy bear implant. Is the myth gone now about leakage or how it can poison your body if it breaks? The myth is not gone. People still ask me about implants and specifically silicone. Is it safe? But the new types of silicone are much improved. The standard silicone is cohesive. It's like silly putty. I cut an implant in half. The silicone won't go anywhere. It stays right there. Okay. So it's more like a gel. Yes. In my mind, I'm thinking it's a gel rather than a, a runny liquid. Correct. I said earlier on in my introduction that breast enhancement is the number one procedure. Is it about size? Why it's become number one? I don't know if that's the reason it's become number one. Well, what's but your there, experience? It's definitely the most common procedure I do in my practice mm. is breast augmentation. There are a lot of reasons that people come in for breast augmentation. Usually what they tell me is I want the breasts I had when I was younger, before yes. I had kids. So we're reinflating that skin that's there. Sometimes we're evening out differences. The breast can be slightly different sizes, and if it's slight, it's not very much of a problem. Mm. But if it's noticeable, it can make 
are women patients very self-conscious. A lot of my girlfriends have actually had implants, but they haven't had them necessarily for size. They've had them just so they look perky again, like they did before they had the kitties. Exactly. Well, this is the perfect time. I already mentioned that breast augmentations were the top cosmetic surgical procedure in the US. Let's see what other procedures rounded out the top five. At number five, there were 133,000 facelifts done last year. Number four is liposuction with 2,000 cases. Eyelid surgery comes in at number three with 216,000 people. 221,000 people had their noses reshaped in 2013 alone. And of course, with 290,000 surgeries, breast augmentation is the number one. There are so many different surgeries out there that every woman can have exactly what she wants when it comes to getting the perfect chest. Perhaps a breast enhancement is exactly what you're looking for. We'll watch the actual procedure right after this short break. From a tummy tuck to cool sculpting and more, it's time for another giveaway. Enter for the chance to win $1,500 towards any procedure performed by Dr. James Clayton. Head over to the Younger You forward slash contest to enter. The following footage contains actual surgical procedures. It may be too graphic for some viewers. Let's head back into the studio to find out more about breast enhancement and then we'll be meeting our patient. Dr Dunkley, I believe there are four sites that you can do an implant. Correct. Explain that to me. What is the difference? Most common is probably going to be in the crease underneath the breast. Yes. A second location would be right next to the areola. Yes. Some people will think of that as the nipple, but mm -hmm. it's the areola, the colored portion. You can also put them in through the armpit, an incision in the armpit. And there is even transumbilical. You can put them in through an incision right next to the belly button. What's the recovery when you're doing these type of procedures? Most patients experience about three days where they're really sore. And after that, they feel pretty good, pretty quick. Most women out there, Dr. Dunkley, have an uneven chest. There's actually been studies done that say at least 85% of women are slightly different from side to side. When you do an implant and you're going to put a C-size cup in, okay, an implant. Do you make them slightly uneven or will they be perfect, perfectly shaped when they're done? If there is a noticeable difference, we'll usually try and do something beforehand to make sure we even them out, such as pick different implant sizes. Sometimes it's not so much the size is different, but the crease under the breasts are different height. We try and uh. notice those things and correct them with the surgery. Do many patients come back after they had the original implant and then say, I actually want bigger ones. I do get that. I try not to. I'd prefer them to be really happy the first time. But with time, things definitely change. And so over the course of a number of years, you lose more natural breast tissue, and patients may decide, hey, they want to be a little bit bigger. Is there anything that patients should be doing before they actually go in for the procedure? When I say that, is there anything else that they can do to see if that's what they're wanting to do? Well, we do tell them if they have any questions about size to come back and try again, bring a friend, bring their significant other, just so that they can get another set of eyes on it. And they just want to make sure they're happy afterwards. That's our goal for every patient, <laughs> happy. Well, I was going to say it's great that they're happy, but isn't it when you bring friends in that they can also cause problems? Occasionally. There is what I call a husband factor. The husbands and that's usually, want to bigger. Yep, go and bigger. And the girlfriends say, oh, don't go that big. You need to be smaller. <laughs> so it creates quite a bit of confusion, I'm sure, in your office. <laughs> it can. <laughs> Most of the time, they agree a surprising amount. Now let's meet our patient, Danielle, and find out what was her reasons for wanting this procedure. My name is Danielle Weber, and I'm 23. Hello, Danielle. Hi. Are you ready for your surgery? Yeah, I'm Next nervous. One. Which is normal. Everybody's a little <laughs> bit nervous. The reason I decided to get a breast augmentation is because I wanted to feel better about myself and feel more of like a woman. What will be the difference in the cup size if there's going to be any between the 450 and the 500 cc's? The first 150 cc's will just fill out whatever cup you wear. So if you're a B and we put in a 150 cc implant, we we'll just fill out your B cup, give you a little more upper breast fullness. After that, every 150 cc's roughly gives you another cup size. So I might as well go big or go home. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm just not happy with the size that they are right now. When I was 16 years old, when they s stopped growing, I was just like, okay, well, this is it. Everyone else is blessed, and I don't feel good about myself. Right. Perfect. You ready to get dressed, and yes. then we'll start drawing on you and do some pictures and stuff like that. Okay. Here we go. Yeah, we're gonna first of all just mark the midline. We wanna know right where the middle is between the two breasts. It's kind of the top of our breast pocket that we're gonna develop right there. And then the lateral part of the dissection, we wanna keep that about even with the lateral edge of the breast right there. All right, now I'm gonna put your incision. We want that kind of just centered right underneath. I think that's everything. With my self-esteem, it hasn't really affected it a whole lot, but I know that it will make me feel just 100% and a lot better once the procedure's done. Well, let's get going. So we've just made the incision. Now we're um, dissecting down. We're actually looking for the pectoral muscle. Since we're putting these implants under the muscle, I'm trying to get down to the pec muscle. We're going to go right around the side of it. We'll lift it up and create a pocket underneath there. And we like to do the whole dissection with the cautery, that way we get less bleeding. What I want to feel better about after the procedure is just feeling, like I said earlier, more of a grown woman instead of like a little girl. Right over at that center attachment of the pec muscle right there, I'm touching my finger on the inside. And the only place I need to open up still is just a little bit right up there. And we're gonna just release this muscle a little bit right through here. It helps minimize distortion when the person flexes. Coming up after the break, we will continue to see what happens during this breast augmentation procedure. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter for updates on the show and join the Younger You conversation. Check out the Younger You website to watch full episodes of the show, read about our product of the week and get useful tips and tricks to help you achieve the Younger You. The following footage contains actual surgical procedures. It may be too graphic for some viewers. We're going to continue to watch as Dr Dunkley boosts that bosom and find out a bit more about why Danielle felt she needed bigger breasts. These sponges we put in just to soak up any possible bleeding, though she hasn't bled at all, which has been really nice. Some bleed a little more than others. But we're gonna leave them in there while we go to the other side, and then we pull them out to check them, just as insurance against bleeding. All right, so same thing again. We just made our skin incision. Now we're basically dissecting down so we can find that pec muscle. So that just gives you a little glimpse into the pocket we've created. I feel like it. My family's been really supportive in this. My mom, I think, is just excited or more excited for me than I am, because I've told her for a long time that I wanted them. So my whole family supports me in this, and they think it's great. You know, my mom's here today, and she'll be taking care of me. Gonna release that muscle just a little bit. Make sure we have our dual plane technique and then my distortion with muscle flexion. All right, let's pack this side. I've tried to keep it a secret as much as I can, but people ask why I'm taking work off for so long, it's kind of hard to lie. So friends have been asking me, but only a select few close friends really know, and they're excited for me. All right, pull our packing out of the other side. It's really clean, which means there's very little, actually virtually no bleeding. Excellent, okay, let's irrigate. Now we have our implant. This is a 457cc silicone implant. We like these to initially be just a little bit small so that we can adjust them to our implant. When I go back to work, it's gonna be like, oh my gosh, you know? But I'm not trying to be all flashy, so I think they'll be like, okay, something's different about you, but we're not quite sure. Perfect. All right, second side, same thing, which is great. No signs of bleeding. Okay, let's irrigate. 
Our laps give off a little bit of cotton fiber probably, so I always like to irrigate a couple of times, make sure we get all those cotton fibers out if there's any in there, and that we get things nice and clean. Pretty even. We're sitting in there nice and flat. Okay, why don't you uh, raise the bed up? Let's sit her up and take a look. That looks pretty dang even. I like them. That's fine. She's gonna look fabulous, actually. Okay, let's lay her down. You know, I've never had the mindset of, oh no, plastic surgery, you're fake. It's more of, I mean, if it makes you feel better. I think it's all about how you feel about yourself and it's gonna make you feel better than great. Do it, why not? All right, we're gonna put some deep stitches. The, the best way to get a good closure with, that isn't indented is to make sure we close the layers. She's using a pickup in there to protect the implant so that I can't puncture it with the needle while we do these stitches that are right next to the implant. The stitch we're using is a monofilament dissolvable stitch. She's gonna feel pretty good most of today. That numbing medicine seems, seems to give them quite a long lasting relief. Tomorrow morning she'll be much more sore, but it's only bad for about three days. And after that, you're still stiff, but it's not extremely painful. The advice I would give to women who are thinking about it is get a consultation. Consultations are free. You know, go visit with doctors get a feel for it and see if it's something that you really want. Because once I had my consultation, I was like, okay, it's over, I'm, it's done deal. <laughs> I'm getting it done. So we've done a deep row of stitches. We're gonna do a second deep row to bring the skin edges together. And then we put a final row that just basically gets the skin ed edges perfectly together, but has no tension on it. And that'll be our last layer. This is called the running subcuticular stitch that I'm doing now. Just goes right along the skin edge. I always want a little bit of a ridge for incision because as I mentioned when they heal they tighten or contract and if we have it perfectly flat and it contracts we get a little bit of an indent. So we like to have just a little bit of a ridge when we're through. So, and we just have our ends out. We'll tape them down with some steri strips and then cut them off next week. After the break, we'll be back in the studio to talk to Dr. Dunkley and Danielle. Do you think she's happy with her results? Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter for updates on the show and join the Younger You conversation. From a tummy tuck to cool sculpting and more, it's time for another giveaway. Enter for the chance to win $1,500 towards any procedure performed by Dr. James Clayton. Head over to the Younger You forward slash contest to enter. In the case of my mom, she had breast cancer. And so, um, you know, for her, I think it really helped her self-esteem to just feel like her womanhood was back. Um, and I know some of my stepsisters that have like had that procedure done and they've had good and bad experiences both. As I've always said many times before, being a younger you is all about confidence. Will Danielle be happy with her results and have that confidence she always wanted? Let's go check it out. She's with us in the studio today to talk about her results, but first let's look at her before and after shots. What size were you, Danielle? before you actually had this done? Um, well, Dr. Duckley said I was a B cup. I think I was more of like an A cup. Okay. But Well, when I see the aftershot, something, <laughs> hello, mama. <laughs> Definitely you went to what size? Um, double D. Okay. Well, they look very impressive sitting beside <laughs> me, I must say. <laughs> Dr. Duckley, are you proud of your work? As long as she's happy, I'm very proud. Yes. Well, I think you are. You're 24 years of age. Yes. Why having breast augmentations at such a young age? A lot of people are like, wait till you have kids, wait till you're married. I just, I don't know, I'm not married. Yeah. And so I just wanted to feel like a woman, you know, growing okay. up, so. Okay. Yeah. I like that. 
are there complications if you have a baby and you're breastfeeding or if you decide to have a baby? Definitely pregnancy can have an impact on the breast. I tell the patients that the most important thing they can do during a pregnancy is just to wear a good supportive bra. You, so you can still uh, breastfeed? The studies show about 20% will not be able to breastfeed after getting implants. However, I've never actually had one of my patients not able to breastfeed after having implants if they wanted to. You said you didn't want to have a boy chest, <laughs> that you felt very flat chested. Yes, very. Do you feel that this has given you more confidence? Very, very. You're going to have people sitting at home going, she was too young to have that. What do you say to those people? It was my decision and that's why I didn't tell anybody, mm. you know, something that I wanted to do for myself. and. I mean, a lot of people, you know, you should wait till I, I've, I mean, I had a few people say you should wait till after your kids, you know, but again, I don't know when I'm going to have kids. I'm exactly. If, if a patient comes in and says, I'm planning to get pregnant in the next year, yeah. I usually say, you should wait. But if they come in single and say that uh, they have nothing immediately lined up, you know, it's, okay. it's, I say, well, then you need to decide. Do you want to enjoy the breast for years before you get married, before you have kids, before it's possible okay. and not for sure that you may need to have them redone? Have you had more attention? Um, I wouldn't say, I mean, I'm dating somebody right uh -huh. now, and so not really, but I've, you know, it just makes me feel more confident. After your procedure, how long before you got back into the swing of things? The first week or two, I couldn't do much, yeah. <laughs> but probably about like a month or two when I was like, okay, now I feel normal and I can do things on my own. And the worst of it's the first three days, but after a week, most patients go back to work at the most a week. Pain level, you haven't had a kid yet, so you can't say you can cope <laughs> with most, most pain. 10 being the worst, one being a uh, walk in the park. And it was painful. I just felt, I mean, I guess you could say like, it was like elephants hanging from your chest. And you just seem heavier. And you don't realize how much of your chest muscles you use on a daily basis till you have a surgery like that. I couldn't sit up on my own. My mom had to like sit me up. I couldn't lift Ooh. my arms up. Common. Yeah. Normal, Dr. Dunkley? Yeah, most patients feel like they can sit up and get up, but they definitely feel it when they do. Well, I think you look beautiful. Well, thank you. You really do. I'm going to ask you three procedures that you would do if you had the opportunity tomorrow. I don't know. I like that. That's tough. Well, you to don't be need. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and that is good <laughs> okay. because I don't want people to have the impression that you had breast implants at 24 and now you're going to continue because there's a lot of people out there that Dr. Dunkley do believe cosmetic surgery can become addictive. And I have some patients that come into my office and they are addicted to cosmetic procedures mm. and I don't want them waiting in my waiting room. We always get them right back mm. and they often ask me for things that I'm not willing to do. Sometimes they come in with legitimate concerns. They'll say, you know, I, I want my breasts done and I was also thinking that my arms looked horrible and I should get mm. some liposuction and I'll say, be happy to do your breasts, your arms look fabulous, we don't need to do anything there. And I've had husbands say, thank you, that's what I keep telling oh, her. Really? And well, I, you yeah. let the husbands in and that's not always a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I keep saying, don't let, it, don't let a girlfriend in or a husband because they make the client change their minds too so many times. Thank you for sharing. I oh, really of course. appreciate it. Dr. Dunkley, impressive. No, well, good thank job. You. According to the American Society of Plastic Surgeons, 98% of women who had a breast augmentation say the results either met or exceed their expectations. Most women also reported improvements in self-esteem and even quality of life. For more information about the show, visit our website at theyoungeryou.tv and I'll see you next week. Next week on The Younger You, do you have painful varicose veins? Find out how to remove them and learn why this isn't just a cosmetic procedure. The Younger You set provided by Madison McCord Interiors.